Tomorrow will mark 30 days since we released the White House guidelines for a safe and phased opening of America. That's what we're doing. It's the opening of America. We're going to have an amazing year next year. We're going to have a great transition into the fourth quarter. As of this morning, almost every state has taken steps to begin reopening, and the American people are doing an extraordinary job of continuing to take precautions while at the same time wanting to start, and they will be starting to resume, their American way of life. We uh, will be reigniting our economic engines. We're going to be taking care of our most vulnerable, which are our senior citizens and some others. We're going to be working very, very hard on our senior citizens and our nursing homes and various communities to support those that are struggling in this very difficult time. Others don't have the same kind of struggle. A key feature of our reopening plan is the largest and most ambitious testing system in the world by far. America is now conducting close to 350,000 tests per day, an unthinkable number just a short while ago more than anybody in the world by far, suggesting many states now have excess testing capacity to monitor for new outbreaks. Florida, many other states have so much testing, they, the testers are waiting for people to show up. It's great. Another essential pillar of our strategy to keep America open is the development of effective treatments and vaccines as quickly as possible. I want to see if we can do that very quickly. We're looking to uh, when I say quickly, we're looking to get it by the end of the year if we can. Today, I want to update you on the next stage of this momentous medical initiative. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. A massive scientific, industrial, and logistical endeavor, unlike anything our country has seen since the Manhattan Project. You really could say that nobody's seen anything like we're doing, whether it's ventilators or testing. Nobody's seen anything like we're doing now within our country since the Second World War. Incredible. Its objective is to finish developing and then to manufacture and distribute a proven coronavirus vaccine as fast as possible. Again, we'd love to see if we could do it prior to the end of the year. We think we're going to have some very good results coming out very quickly. In addition, it will continue accelerating the development of diagnostics and breakthrough therapies. The Great National Project will bring together the best of American industry and innovation, the full resources of the United States government, and the excellence and precision of the United States military. We have the military totally involved. We're also working very strongly with other countries who are also uh, have some great great scientists, doctors, and we're all working very closely together, and they're viewing us as the leader, and we are uh, — the relationship with other countries on solving this problem has been uh, incredible. To date, Operation Warp Speed has brought together all of the experts across the federal government from places like the NIH, CDC, FDA, and many other agencies. This historic partnership will now bring together the full resources of the Department of Health and Human Services with the Department of Defense. And we know what that means. That means the full power and strength of military, the military. And that really talking about the logistics. We get it when we get it. That means the logistics, getting it out so that everybody can take it. And today, we're proud to announce the addition of two of the most highly respected skilled professionals in our country, worldwide respected. Operation Warp Speed's chief scientist will be Dr. Marcef Slowy, a world-renowned immunologist who helped create 14 new vaccines — that's a lot of our new vaccines — in 10 years during his time in the private sector, one of the most respected men in the world in the production and, really, on the uh, formulation of vaccines. Joining Dr. Slowey as chief operating officer will be General Gus Perna, a four-star general who currently oversees 190,000 service members, civilians, and contractors as commander of the U.S. Army Material Command. That means logistics. That means getting it out. We've got to get it out there. 
So, General, thank you very much. And, Doctor, thank you very much. It's great to have you on board. Really highly respected people. Thank you. In preparation for this initiative, experts throughout the government have been collaborating to evaluate roughly 100 vaccine candidates from all over the world. They have identified 14 that they believe are the most promising. While we accelerate the final phases of vaccine trials, Operation Warp Speed will be simultaneously accelerating its manufacturing and manufacturing process. In other words, we're getting ready so that when we get the good word that we have the vaccine, we have the formula, we have what we need, we're ready to go, as opposed to taking years to gear up. We're gearing up. It's risky. It's expensive. But we'll be saving massive amounts of time. We'll be saving years if we do this properly, and that's what we're doing. So we're gearing up on the assumption that we'll have in the near future, relatively near future, a vaccine. Typically, pharmaceutical companies wait to manufacture a vaccine, a vaccine until it has received all of the regulatory approvals necessary, and this can delay vaccines' availability to the public as much as a year and even more than that. However, our task is so urgent that under Operation Warp Speed, the federal government will invest in manufacturing all of the top vaccine candidates before they're approved. So we're knowing exactly what we're doing before they're approved. That means they better come up with a good vaccine because we're ready to deliver it. This will eliminate any unnecessary delay and enable us to begin providing Americans with a proven vaccine the day our scientists say, we're ready, we got it. There's never been a vaccine project anywhere in history like this. And I just want to make something clear. It's very important. Vaccine or no vaccine, we're back. And we're starting the process. And in many cases, they don't have vaccines. And a virus or a flu comes, and you fight through it. We haven't seen anything like this in a hundred and some odd years, 1917. But you fight through it. And people sometimes, I guess, we don't know exactly yet, but it looks like they become immune, or at least for a short while and maybe for life. But you fight through it. But what we'd like to do, if we can, is the vaccine. I think we're going to be successful in doing it, and hopefully by the end of the year. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.